with this, I um, would like to ask uh, Mr. Engelbert Bayer um, to talk to us first and to give us uh, his words on um, resilience engineering within um, security research in Germany. Herr Bayer. Yes. Professor Hiemeyer, Professor Flynn, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much for this initiative. Thank you very much for the chance today for me to give some words to you. I'm very glad uh, to be here. You already mentioned it. Uh, civil security is an issue of highest importance for uh, the federal government. Uh, we invested a lot of efforts, of money in recent years, and we are very glad that this is taken up by this impressive uh, audience today, that all the critical issues are discussed, and uh, that you give us your advice. Uh, in mid-February, power supply in the district of Berlin, berlin Köpenick, broke down for one and a half day, days. 20,000 households and several uh, hospitals were without power supply, supply for one and a half day, without heat, without water, and uh, all the other uh, things we are used to. And this is one of the situations where we can assess the resi resilience our, of our infrastructures, the resilience of uh, uh, the infrastructures we rely on. We can assess if this leads to panics or cuts of supply, perhaps life-threatening in some some instances. Um, this is, events like this are very rare in Germany uh, because normally the infrastructure more or less runs. Uh, but here we had one of these um, incidents. Our experience was that public authorities were able to keep up order, to um, keep up the necessary, uh, necessary infrastructures due, as we feel, as well to different research projects we had underway in recent years. For example, in the field of monitoring systems, which allowed the fire workers guard uh, to assess where um, generators run out of fossil fuel, just in order to keep the most urgent infrastructures um, running. Um, so, but events like this make it very clear how urgent uh, civil research civil security research really is. Um, this was one of the reasons why uh, the federal government of Germany put our framework research program for social civil security in place uh, 12 years ago. Uh, we feel we have a lot of uh, results like this one I just uh, mentioned on hand. Um, we feel uh, that um, uh, a lot of uh, topics were put into a reality. We have three very main missions in this program. One main mission is to um, keep public infrastructures running, to establish monitoring systems which look at shortcomings, shortcuts. The second mission is keep public authorities running in emergency cases to empower them by giving them at hand the crucial, crucial techniques they need, uh, high-tech solutions in different cases, but as well emergencies, emergency schemes which help them to deal uh, with um, situations where everybody is under stress. And last but not, but not least, we put a lot of um, emphasis on um, the point to empower people, to employ volunteers uh, in critical situations, to give them the means at hand to help at that place where they are perhaps most needed by using modern algorithms, um, by using the uh, possibilities we have at hand with smartphone systems, networks, and so on. Just think um, on the case of uh, flood events and others which we had in recent years uh, some, sometimes. So um, these are the three main missions of our program we have under work. 
On the other hand, we know that all of this will not suffice. Uh, we know that uh, threats are growing because of climate change. We have to expect more extreme weather conditions. We know about the possibilities and the dangers which uh, are um, um, attached to uh, cybersecurity uh, events. It's hard really to see what impact these cybersecurity uh, events can have, but we all know and we all have read a lot of articles and, and, and analyzes about uh, what scale uh, these events in the worst case uh, could come to. So it is clear we need new solutions, uh, we need new approaches, uh, we need uh, uh, very intense thinking about uh, what uh, might be ways into the future. So I came into my job in this area half a year ago and I have so two, um, two main issues uh, which uh, concern me um, when looking at all was, what was reached in this community in Germany but uh, in the international community as well. The first question I would like to raise, uh, raise is the question of uh, the transfer uh, of, of results. So we know there are a lot of possibilities uh, around to make infrastructures, uh, to make our countries, uh, to make our communities more resilient. Uh, but we know on the other side as well uh, that it's very hard uh, to put these solutions into practice. So we have to look for new ways uh, to, um, to employ all the results with which you and, um, and others uh, have uh, worked on uh, in, in recent years. Uh, public procurement, new ways to public procurement for example, uh, could um, show us a way uh, into the future, um, but uh, as well regional approaches, uh, best practice regional approaches could show us a way in the future. Um, so this is my first point which I would like to bring to this um, um, conference. The second point is the point uh, that uh, in, as far as I was able to see up to now, it's very hard uh, as well to, um, uh, to assess in what areas it is most useful to, uh, to invest. We have a huge um, landscape of possible risks in front of us. So um, probably this is one of the topics probably about which you discussed a lot in recent years. But, um, I still have, uh, have questions here. Um, the, question, um, the question is uh, in what area to invest? So what risk assessment do we employ? And what algorithms do we have uh, to set our, our priorities in these, uh, this area? I think what is very clear is uh, that all of these challenges uh, we can only uh, cope with when uh, we um, do this in international collaboration. So I thank the organizers for this very impressive network. I thank all of you for being here and to share ex experiences. I thank all of you for uh, perhaps getting out of silos, making contacts to other professions, to other, uh, to other areas, to, uh, to other fields of responsibility. I think this is extremely important and this is something which characterizes our, this field and which uh, frames our ability to cope with uh, the challenges ahead. We uh, are in the process right now in the federal government to discuss with our colleagues in other European countries about Horizon Europe. We very strongly um, support a very strong research base in Horizon Europe um, in the field of um, uh, security. And uh, we uh, hope that we can, in the further negotiations, make some headways here as well. We know that it's very important to discuss with the communities, with the public, to make them aware um, um, of possible risk on the one hand, on the one side, but as well to give uh, our people a cer certain sense in that direction that they can feel that the governments and the science system is dealing with these aspects, that it is taking care, that it's looking forward, and that it's doing best, its best uh, to uh, prepare us prepare us as best as possible uh, for uh, the challenges and possible threats ahead. 
So thank you very again. Thank you again very much for being here. And I'm looking forward to a very interesting conference. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Herr Bayer. Thank you very much for your continued interest in and support for civil security research and resilience research. Freiburg is the biggest Fraunhofer location in Germany. But Freiburg also is uh, the location with a full spectrum university. And it is the merit of our president that um, the topic of sustainability and resilience as one major component of this research in Freiburg has become a strategic path, even a flagship, explicitly mentioned as a flagship in what we do in terms of research, basic research in Freiburg. And a strategic cooperation between those two uh, major research um, institutions in Freiburg between Fraunhofer and the University of Freiburg is what we call the Sustainability Center. This was enabled by the president of the university and the president of Fraunhofer in Munich, Professor Neugebauer. And I'm very happy that uh, I can now ask our president of the university, Magnificenz, Professor Schiever, to the floor and talk to us. Hi. -o. Well, um, distinguished guests from around the world, uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, really proud and honored to welcome you here uh, in the city of Freiburg and uh, at, well, close to our university, so to say. Merzhausen, where you are now, and today is not part of Freiburg. Uh, it's a separate uh, legal entity. Anyway, I'm really happy that uh, uh, Stephen uh, Flynn agreed to accept the invitation from Stefan to be here uh, for the second uh, global uh, uh, network, uh, global resilience research network summit, um, which ever took place so far. And that's a great honor for us, and uh, not only for uh, the Fraunhofer Institute, EMI, but also for the university. And I'm very happy that we had the opportunity to sign an uh, uh, MOU yesterday that we will further cooperate uh, between the Northeastern uh, University and uh, the Institute and the University of Freiburg. Well, you talked about disruptive events and uh, I'm also proud that uh, resilience engineering is deeply rooted in the tradition uh, of our city and uh, the engineering competencies uh, here in this region, because as you might have realized yesterday, um, we have a famous landmark here in uh, Freiburg, the so-called Freiburger Bächle, which is a little runnel running uh, through the city. And this is, uh, from my perspective, a paramount example of resilience by maximizing the adaptive capacity of an urban water system uh, against a wide variety of circumstances and events. The so-called Bächle were originally built as part of the dual water supply system of Freiburg in the Middle Ages, providing service water to its citizens. Besides that, they also served uh, a multitude of purposes. The people of Freiburg used them for waste disposal the Bächle transported rainwater out of the city and the town, and their water was used to irrigate fields outside the city. And because of the dirt carried alongside, the Bächle water turned out to be an excellent nutrient-rich fertilizer for the fields. What's more, and now we are talking about resilience directly, the Bächle proved tremendously useful in case of various adverse events. They floated snow out of the city and um, 
This was uh, tremendously important uh, during the winter time. They provided the fields, as I said, with water even in the case of droughts. That's important. And they enabled a fast and flexible firefighting and fire being one of the most serious threats for medieval cities. All in all, the Freiburger Bächle are a perfect example of early resilience engineering, where the people of Freiburg used the ingenuity of engineers in the Middle Ages already to maximize their adaptive capacity towards the dangers of life. So obviously, it's the right place to be for uh, resilience engineers here in Freiburg to talk about the challenges in the future and today. And with this tradition, uh, what uh, Stefan already said, the University of Freiburg is uh, very much specialized in research on both resilience and uh, as a rather social science concept and resilience engineering as seeking technology, technological ways to improve people's and society's ability to cope with adversities. Our center, and I'd like to mention some other examples, our Center for Security and Society, for example, is a transdisciplinary center that focuses uh, the University of Freiburg's research efforts in the field of technological, inform informatical, juridical, sociological, ethical, and political security research. And I'm very grateful to our federal ministry, which is uh, heavily supporting this initiative here in Freiburg. As civil security has become a contested theme for the general public, our researchers deal with topics such as the possibilities, risks, and ambivalences of modern technologies, insecurities in the face of global economic, social, and political upheavals, and uh, not least, challenges arising from the digital uh, revolution in the field of security. Resilience is a promising concept to deal with all kinds of adversities while at the same time taking ethical and social questions into account. And uh, this is, from my perspective, very important and is very, very well done within our Center for Security and Society. And by the way, um, we also, as uh, was already mentioned, uh, working uh, in a unique way, I would say, together with the Fraunhofer Society. And uh, so I'm really grateful that, uh, again, the Fraunhofer EMI was uh, able to uh, organize this conference here uh, in uh, Freiburg, and so we can show what we are doing here. And I'm very, very proud that we uh, not only have this um, uh, Center of Excellence in Sustainability Research together with the Fraunhofer Society, but we have uh, another unique uh, institution together, established together with the Fraunhofer Society, and this is our new department at the Faculty of Engineering, uh, the Department of Sustainable Systems Engineering, in short, Inatech. And um, so there's, there's a place where we do, where we really the resilience research is centered uh, in a, a unique cooperation between Fraunhofer and the University of Freiburg. And of course, we were able to take risks. This is a totally new approach, and we then decided that we will appoint 40 new professorships, seven professorships from uh, the Fraunhofer side and seven from the university side to really establish this new institute. And taking risk means we ha so far we are still working to, to establish the necessary research infrastructure for this institute. We had just started with the professorships and said, well, uh, the infrastructure will follow. And of course, there's some pressure to uh, our ministry, and I've seen uh, the representative so far, no? Okay, but maybe uh, uh, the federal ministry might help um, to, to really uh, bring up those infrastructures. But we already started uh, two programs, a master program and a bachelor program in sustainable systems engineering. And uh, first step was to, to start the master programs, which is totally taught in English. And so it's uh, very, very much uh, attractive to an uh, international student uh, community. And I can tell you that we have an average of 500 applicants every academic year for 40 places in this program. And uh, the most of the applicants are international appli applicants. And I would say some 75% of all students in this master programs are international students. So they outnumber the national uh, 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 a cohort uh, clearly, and obviously they are better prepared to do uh, to apply for this program. 
um, than our national students. And this is also unique. There is no other uh, department uh, working on uh, sustainable systems engineering. There is no other program so far available in Germany which offers uh, such uh, a course. Uh, um, uh, and uh, there's no other institute where we have this close cooperation between uh, the Fraunhofer Society and uh, the university. And you clearly see what we want. We want to educate the next generation of resilience engineers here in Freiburg, and we will become the place to be to do that, not only here in Freiburg, but also together with our European partners, the uh, leading research universities in Basel and in Strasbourg, where we really cooperate very closely together. And as uh, Stefan Hiermeyer already said, we are in the lead in this uh, uh, European University Alliance, which we have created. We are in the lead to organize all the research in the area of sustainability uh, across borders and together with our uh, participating universities and that makes us more attractive, even more attractive for students and young researchers because they are able to do their programs not only here in Freiburg, not only together with the University and the Fraunhofer Society, but also together with our partnering um, universities in Switzerland and France. And that's also a very attractive uh, profile for young early career researchers uh, to come to this place to do their research here. And so. I'm really proud to, to welcome you here, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to the outcome of this uh, uh, unique uh, conference which we have organized here. And I'd like to say thank you again to uh, Stefan Hiermeyer and his whole team of the EMI, which organized uh, this event. I'm sa and I say thank you to uh, Stephen Flint and Uta Poiger who uh, are here and who agreed to, to accept this invitation to be in Freiburg. And I think Freiburg is in Europe the place to do that. And thank you to accept this and very welcome and I am looking forward to a very successful summit today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hayo, for um, your talk. Thank you for the risk you take to cooperate with Fraunhofer so, so, so closely in Freiburg. And Thank you specifically for contractually uh, for the contractual commitment you took yesterday for um, even more um, intense cooperation with Northeastern University. We want to expand this not only to research but also to education and to exchange of scientists in the future. And um, I'm looking forward to doing this. And that's why I'm proud to now um, welcome Professor Uta Poiger, the Dean of the College of Social Sciences and Humanities at Northeastern University, the institution that um, is the reason for us to be together here today. And um, Uta, it's your floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan. It's really a great pleasure to be here with you in Freiburg and as we've just been reminded in the town of Merzhausen and to welcome all of you as well to this two-day summit, to this or really almost three-day summit of intense conversations and collaborations around the theme of resilience. As um, a few speakers have mentioned already, we were indeed very proud last year um, to be able to welcome many of you to the first summit and are so very grateful um, to all of you, you here in Freiburg for hosting us this year. Like um, uh, Rector Shiva and um, Director Hiermeyer have said, we in Northeastern are also very pleased that we are extending our partnership into the educational spaces. And I think the kind of cooperation around education in resilience that we are um, now making a reality between Freiburg and Northeastern, I'm sure is something that we should probably think about in broader terms as part of the um, resilience research network as well to create new opportunities for exchange for younger generations, I think, should be one of our important goals as well. Indeed, the close partnership between the Global Resilience Institute at Northeastern and the Fraunhofer Ernst Mach Institute and Freiburg University has been, as you all realize, one of the cornerstones of the international network of the 
Global Resilience Research Network. And I'm really delighted to see that in the past year, this network has grown to 26 institutions around the globe. And we are pleased that these institutions are connected by research collaborations, by in-person meetings, and also through the virtual links, links net. Resilience, as you have heard, is very much key to the work that the University of Freiburg is doing together with Fraunhofer. And I can proudly say that resilience is also a key concept for research engage and engagement at my university, at Northeastern University. In fact, we too see the building of resilient communities and infrastructures as a multidisciplinary effort. And we see it also as tying together work that we do on grand challenges, uh, the, uh, really tying together work that we do in the broad fields of health, sustainability, and security, our uh, three key research uh, pillars at Northeastern University. The contributions that universities can make to societal and infrastructural resilience in a time of man-made threats and natural disasters, arguably natural disasters now increasingly also man-made, these kinds of contributions can only be realized if we don't sit in ivory towers. And there I see very similar ecosystems evolving in Boston, Freiburg, and around our partner institutions in the Global Resilience Research Network. These are ecosystems in which universities work closely with public and private partners, and certainly the EMI uh, Freiburg relationship is a particularly strong example of uh, what this, such an ecosystem can do. These ecosystems also drive youth-inspired and applied research and at the same time support basic research, and that continu continuum is important. I already mentioned how important resilience is for Northeastern. Let me mention the second key concept for us at the university, that is the concept of humanics. Humanics has ambitions that parallel those of Freiburg's new multidisciplinary department, the Inatech department, the Department of Sustainable Systems Engineering, and also Freiburg's Center on Security and Society. With the concept of humanics, we seek to integrate three key literacies in an age of artificial intelligence. We refer to these three literacies as technological, as data, and human literacies. Now, arguably, um, as a humanist, you can imagine I consider technology and data human as well, but just bear with me uh, for a moment here. We firmly believe that responsible building of technological solutions requires careful attention to data as well as key capacities such as creativity, entrepreneurial thinking, social responsibility. Indeed, responsible solutions for resilience require both the deployment of data and technology and the critical interrogation of data and technology and their social implications. And in this context, I also see close alignment in the multidisciplinary and integrative educational programs that we are building in different parts of the globe. Strong examples have already be, be, been mentioned, such as Freiburg's master's program on sustainable systems engineering. At Northeastern, examples include our security and resilience studies program, as well as our program in environmental science and policy. All these programs seek to integrate thinking about policy with engineering solutions, even if they do so with somewhat different emphases. Over the next couple of days, I look forward to learning from all of our partners about the distinct and yet aligned ways in which we integrate resilience research and thinking into our educational efforts. What also unites partners in the network and is closely linked to the partnerships between universities and the public and private sector is a commitment to experiential learning. Experiential learning is fundamentally about applying knowledge and skills across contexts. Germany has a long tradition of this, for example, with its apprenticeship systems or with its technical universities. In my university, we send students into experiences with companies and institutes 
or governmental and non-governmental organizations in half-year increments. We call this cooperative education. And we help our students prepare and reflect on these experiences. And what's important to keep in mind is that we do not do this only in engineering. We do this throughout the university. So we see this as just important to the humanities and social sciences as it is to traditionally applied fields such as engineering. And I see a very, um, this is a very important program for us that actually originated in an effort to allow students to pay for their tuition dollars. But in the meantime, we see it really as a very important feature of the ambitious research university that we are. And we indeed see, uh, send students of these experiences to locations on all continents, yes, including Antarctica, and again, see it as very important um, to our research university. And I see a very similar recognition of valuing engagement and experiential learning in the very successful research university that Albert Ludwigs Universität is and in the Fraunhofer Institutes that it collaborates with. Applying knowledge and skills across contexts is surely also key to the work of our Global Resilience Research Network. Let me then end on a somewhat personal note. Many of you can probably recognize that I have a German accent. I, in fact, first encountered the Freiburger Bechle uh, when I was 17 years old. And I also encountered a term that I have not heard in my time in 2019 in Freiburg. I also encountered the term fish head. Fish had referred here in the South in the 1980s um, to someone like me who had grown up in the north of Germany. And I found both the Bechle, and yes, I very quickly experienced on a hot summer day how they indeed cool the air. It's a really a wonderful uh, phenomenon dating from the Middle Ages, as Rector Shiva um, told you. I found both the Bechle and the combination of intense regionalism and cosmopolitanism, as Dr. Shiva reminded us, this is a, a place of close collaboration in the European context, and as we all experience, a, close, uh, a place of close collaboration in the global context as well. I found this combination so compelling that I decided to apply to Albert Ludwigs Universität and then started my university studies here in history, in German literature and language, in art history, with some economics sprinkled in. And it was Albert Ludwig's Universität that sent me after three years for one year of a, on an exchange scholarship to the United States. And I have to admit that those, that one year ultimately has turned into more than 30 years. But as part of my work as a historian, I have always maintained close relations um, to Germany throughout all those years. So let me just also say that it is really then a special honor for me to be back in Freiburg and Merzhausen and to thank our hosts and partners at Fraunhofer and at the University of Freiburg. And I also have to say that key moments in Freiburg and during that initial year as an exchange student have remained important to my own intellectual trajectory as a cultural and gender historian and to my commitments as a university administrator and leader. One is a commitment to analyzing inequities past and present, and that is something that I think we all recognize is intensely important as we think about resilience. Two, a recognition that changing contexts challenges us in very productive ways. And finally, a commitment to enabling collaborations as well as the difficult conversations and productive friction that true collaborations and partnerships must also entail. A network like the Global Resilience Research Network is so very important at a time where populists in different parts of the globe deploy racism and nationalism, a sense of crisis, and fantasies about the power of walls. They deploy all this in order to create a fake and necessarily short-lived sense of security for some. This fast-changing world cannot afford simplistic solutions and misplaced walls be they border walls or misplaced sea walls. And it challenges all of us to think and collaborate on multiple scales. The integrative ambitions of resilience and humanics surely open many opportunities in such a world. I very much look forward to learning from all of you during our days together here, and I look forward to learning where the Global Resilience Research Network goes next. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Uta. Thank you.